Hello, today we're going to be talking about some different teaching strategies for both integrated and designated English language development in a K-12 classroom. So let us begin. So what is the goal of English language development for our students? Well, there are a variety of them. Um, namely to foster English language proficiency in diverse classrooms. So our students come from a variety and a wide array of different backgrounds. Um, and so we need to foster this language development in order for all of our students to be able to access the content being taught in English. Um, and then also synthesize that information and be able to express themselves both verbally and through writing, right? So because students come from so many different backgrounds, different languages spoken at home, we need some way to um, allow them to access the content we're teaching and that is through developing their own English language literacy. Um, the, another goal is for students to learn English at the level of a native speaker. So not just you know a few phrases here and there, but we want them to have full literacy both verbally and through writing. Um, so going beyond that day-to-day -day language and actually, you know, going as far as to learn academic language and the language that a native speaker would be able to access and use. So, uh, for English language learners to develop the language skills to be able to learn content taught in English. So again, that piece about just building that bridge so they can access the content um, and through that will be through English language development. Um, and then for students to be able to express their content knowledge in English. Again, just demonstrating their synthesis and understanding of the material. Um, if they can't express themselves through, verbally or through writing, how are we gonna be able to assess you know, their learning and their, their understanding of the information? So we need them to be able to express that in um, the language that the content is being taught. Um, yeah, and that all of that, you know, English language development and the goal of it is it's not only to help them during their time in school, but also once they leave the classroom um, and are you know, members of society, we want them to be able to have that literacy in order for them to thrive in society, whether it comes to work or um, further education, things like that. So these are just some, this is just um, elaborates a little bit more about why ELD is so important um, for our students. Um, e, so it builds equity and inclusion. So um, it helps ensure that English language learners have access to education, right? So it's that great equalizer. It levels the playing field and it brings them access directly to um, our education system here. Um, also, so it, it'll help set them up for academic success, right? If they don't have access to the um, content and if they can't express themselves uh, in English, how are we gonna be able to measure their um, academic success? So by helping them develop um, through both integrated and designated ELD, um, this will make that academic success far more likely. Um, communication skills, obviously, you literally we're developing their ability to speak and to write and communicate, and that translates into many different areas of their lives, um, both school, but also, you know, when they leave school, being a member of society, they need to be able to communicate with others around them. So um, it's just all around a beneficial uh, thing for them to develop that language proficiency. Um, it provides them equal opportunities, so if they're um, in the job search or if they're applying to higher institutions or there's any, you know, different opportunities arise, but you have to be able to communicate, right, and be able to respond. So um, it really opens a lot of doors for those students as far as things um, both in and outside of school as well, um, different opportunities. Um, Enhanced cognitive development. So it, uh, it contributes to them um, because they are bilingual, you know, they, the, their brains are, you know, forming neural connections and wiring. Um, it's wiring itself more so um, by learning a secondary language. So this helps with their problem solving skills and things like that. 
um, cultural preservation. So yes, we want them to, you know, integrate into our society and be able to express themselves, but that doesn't mean that they have to lose their identity. So it allows, the bilingual aspect allows them to, you know, access um, the academic content, but also, you know, keep their cultural heritage alive and strong and thriving. Um, social integration, it just helps them, you know, integrate into society better. Obviously, we are a communicative species, so that is probably the biggest, uh, most important thing that a person needs to be able to do is communicate with others. So um, just this English language development, again, translates into many different areas of life. Um, and then global citizenship, so um, it helps kind of broaden their perspective and, um, you know, broaden their horizons and feel like more of a global citizen rather than just isolated, maybe. And, you know, like they're uh, me versus them. It's more of a we perspective that they will ha uh, evolve and develop over time through the use of language and, you know, fi finding that normalcy with language usage. So let's talk about uh, integrated ELD for a moment here. So again, we have two types of English language development, integrated and designated. So <clears throat> integrated is just that. It is English language development that is where the student is fully integrated into a general uh, population classroom. So it's not specific one-on-one -on -one, uh, English language development classes. It's a normal classroom with the general student body where they are fully immersed in the language. Um, and so, um, yeah, so they're, uh, so the instruction is taught in tandem. So there's ELD standards taught in tandem with the state standards at the same time. It's self-contained in one classroom. Um, the benefits of integrated ELD, there's a bunch of them. Um, I'll just name a few. So. Efficiency, so teacher, teachers can teach both language development and the academic content at the same time. So rather than having the student have two separate classes that day that takes up twice as much time, you can develop both within one class um, in tandem simultaneously. Um, also, so uh, enhanced context learning. So. Um, integrated ELD develops both their language proficiency and the content area, right? I kind of just touched on that. Um, also, it makes the classroom more inclusive. So rather than the student feeling segregated or isolated in a separate classroom, they are part of the student body. They are working with groups with uh, native speakers and that conversational aspect really helps because it provides them with comprehensible input from their you know, group members and peers and collaborators and requires them to provide comprehensible output, um, whatever that level may be, but um, just exercising that, that practice of listening, synthesizing the language, and then having some sort of output is really, really good um, practice that they need to do if they want to develop that language proficiency. And also, uh, the integrated ELD, one last thing I'll just touch on really quick, it's good because it helps prepare them for things like standardized tests or work in other class um, classrooms, different content areas, because they're using the academic language um, in those classes alongside the general population. They you know, have more exposure to the academic language. Hopefully they will retain more of the academic language and that same language is what is used on things like standardized tests and in uh, interdisciplinary areas. Um, so there's many benefits. So some teaching strategies for integrated ELD, um, definitely visual aids and graphic organizers. So a lot of students um, really appreciate when um, the, the teacher provides these visual supports. There's a lot of different types of learners, visual being a, one kind that's pretty um, common, I would say, from my observations, but um, it can help English learners illustrate new terms and make connections between words. Um, if you have like some imagery with a word, maybe it'll help them retain that information more or like a, you know, a vocab sheet or a Venn diagram, things that can help them organize their thoughts and make connections from 
their native language to English or from an image or an object to the meaning of that object, for example. Um, cooperative learning, again, I've talked about the comprehensible input and output, so the be real benefit and one strategy that could be implemented in the integrated classroom is group work. A lot of group work um, is you know, really encouraged and it's a great way to get those students using their literacy and kind of pushing themselves to go to that next level or that next step. And then um, scaffolding and differentiation. Obviously, there is going to be a, an array of different um, students with different levels of English development. So making sure to meet those students where they are um, and really provide them with uh, supports that are going to allow them to access the knowledge that they already possess and hopefully evolve and grow that language uh, by uh, differentiating, right? Um, providing them with different supports, um, uh, maybe custom tailoring the curriculum a little bit to, you know, where their strengths lie, where their weaknesses lie, for example. All right, and then we'll talk about designated English language development. So designated uh, English language development is just that. It's designated to its own classroom. So it's not like integrated. It's not within a general population classroom. Designated English language development takes place in its own uh, separate classroom outside of the general uh, population. Um, it's protected time during the school day um, in addition to daily content area lessons where teachers provide lessons specifically for English learners to develop language proficiency. Some of the benefits are the fact that it's targeted language instruction. It allows for very specific targeted in, uh, teaching of vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation. With this um, designated uh, classroom setup, you're able to have a lot more direct one-on-one -on -one time with those English language learners and do tons of formative assessments right away. Um, help, you know, see where they are and where they are lacking and then you know again meet them where they are and help um break down their you know their walls and maybe get them comfortable in the more in initial stages of like speaking or writing before they go out into that general uh, population classroom but yeah in the designated classrooms you, you can customize the instruction um more so than in the general um content area classes um, yeah, and you can make clear objectives in the designated classroom. So maybe in the um, integrated uh, classroom, it you know it's a little bit more gray area as far as the objective is because there is uh, you know standards, the general content area standards involved. But in the designated classroom, you can really, really make the objective clear. What about language are they learning that day? What are they expected to be able to do when they leave? You know, whether it be speaking or writing, it's very language specific. Um, and yeah, I think again, especially for the new language learners, I think uh, the designated classroom is really important because it'll help boost their confidence. Um, if they have no language skills, they will definitely at least be equipped with some in the designated classroom um, to get them, you know, get the ball rolling and get them starting to learn, uh, you know, general phrases and maybe a bit of academic language so that they can start understanding what's happening in those general uh, content area classrooms. Some strategies for designated English language development. Um, well, the comprehensible input. Here we have that piece again. Um, so students need comprehensible input in order to access the content that they are learning with language that they understand. So the comprehensible input is likely not going to be high level academic language at first, um, but it needs to be at their levels so that they can access that. And then as you provide supports um, and you know differentiate the instruction, hopefully they will over time you know, evolve and add to their uh, English artillery, so to speak.
Um, but yeah, in designated vocabulary development, um, it's very critical to reading comprehension and literacy. So again, you get that targeted, uh, personalized instruction time. So really walking them through things like vocabulary um, is a really good thing to do during designated ELD. Um, and yeah, just having those clear objectives, um, really great opportunity in designated classrooms to model the language, to model how it is supposed to sound, um, how, you know, and so, um, yeah, written and oral models will be helpful for the students in a designated classroom. Um, yeah, but in general, I think it's, you get a lot more specific one-on-one -on -one time with the students where you can be very, very thorough about what they need to learn based on where they are in their literacy. Um, the importance of differentiation in English language development, well, um, not only do we meet diverse learner needs, uh, because there are so many varying levels of different learners, um, we are able to access and help a multitude of students through um, differentiating our instruction. Uh, cultural sensitivity, so, you know, not all students are the same. We are all very, very different people, and so it um, it's an opportunity to um, bring in the cultures from all of those different students' backgrounds into the instruction to make the content relatable. If the content's relatable, maybe it'll garner more interest, and maybe they're more likely to retain that information because they have that personal connection um, culturally to the content. Um, it helps increase motivation and engagement because it the students aren't going to be overwhelmed that you're throwing all of this literacy expectations on them. Like you're, it's an opportunity to walk them through at a pace they're comfortable with, and maybe push them a little bit out of their comfort zone. But um, you know we have to go at the right pace um, in order to keep them interested and engaged, right? If they feel overwhelmed, they, they're likely to stop. So it's a gradual process and we're always, always assessing and trying to meet them where they are. And they just have better outcomes after, you know, developing that English literacy. In general, you know, better academic performance, better job placement, um, higher engagement, things like that. So. Uh, and then the role of assessment is just as important, uh, if not more, in English language development classrooms as it would be in a regular content area classroom. The feedback should be as specific as possible. Um, it's a critical component um, that, you know, informs us what they know and if our teaching strategies are working. So. Um, it's critically important to constantly be assessing them, um, both formally and informally. Excuse me, formatively and summatively. Um, and some strategies for that feedback are acceptance, acknowledgement, rephrasing, and repetition. So it's really important when they're going out of their comfort zone to use those English language skills, that you acknowledge what they're saying, that you acknowledge your understanding, that they're on the right track, be encouraging, um, be direct, be clear. Feedback is so, so important uh, so that they know, um, what, you know what they need to improve on going forward. And yeah, just uh, the designated classroom environment, it's got to be one that's a supportive climate. Um, again, these students are doing something very, very um, involved. I mean, learning language is not an easy thing to do. So they need to feel supported and comfortable in that safe space so that they can make mistakes and have, you know, misunderstand but feel okay that they will be supported and that everybody has buy-in in the classroom and that the class is in it together so that no one feels isolated. Um, and then, yeah, the classroom should be culturally sensitive and inclusive. Um, it's just important because it fosters each student's sense of belonging. Um, and they, we always want to make sure that our students are understood and um, valued for what they bring to the table, all of their unique um, traits. So, um, 
the English language development classroom is a wonderful place to appreciate their unique um, assets that they bring. And that is all I have for you. So thank you so much. Um,